بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد الحمد لله تقرب سيد الله سبحانه وتعالى دري الله was once again uh, once again to come into such workshop where is working on the realities of uh, uh, of, of spirituality the the actual reality what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned uh, in the Quran that we should be focused on we should be working towards you might not get the material materialistic world but if your heart is sound and pure and qalbun salim that is what's more uh, most important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what uh, will make you wealthy in hereafter so this is this is only with the tawfiq and the uh, and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has chosen us he has chosen us he said uh, and, and he has uh, hand picked us selected us and it is not our will it is not our power or anything so the incident that i'm going to mention uh, it's of uh, uh, it's about sheikh abdullah antulusi rahimahullah and the test that he went through uh, as a sheikh sheikh al hadith as uh, Muhammad Zakir uh, Kandelwi Rahimullah he used to mention this story and would say that this story has has uh, has emerged into my heart and has uh, stabbed into my heart and engraved into my heart this story and and he said this story just and, and he said I, and I wish that this story for the rest of my life this story stays and this incident of Sheikh Abdullah and Dulusi it stays with me for the rest of my life that will keep me humble and he said in this uh, this incident of Sheikh uh, uh, Abdullah Andalusi rahimullah and he said that the person who's salik and who's going on to this road of uh, of achieving uh, purity of heart and purity of uh, of mind and and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he should also uh, you know let this story emerge and and constantly have Ponder over the story of uh, Sheikh Abdullah Andalusi rahimullah, and the story is narrated by uh, Sheikh Shibli rahimullah. He was also a great, uh, 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 great mentor into the into the field of uh, of, uh, of the sabwaf and and spreading the deen, spreading the deen, and and the preaching of Islam. Sheikh Abdullah Andalusi, what happened to him was he was a, such a great Sheikh. Thousands, thousands of students, thousands, thousands of uh, murid, and thousands of people that would follow him, and and he was a very great scholar, and of, of his time, and they said about thirty thousand hadiths were memorized with asnad, with with narrations. We would just narrate the hadith, you know, we would just narrate it without uh, mentioning any of the asnad. But he would have memorized with uh, of thirty thousand someone who had memorized. And memorization of Quran in all the uh, all the recitation in seven uh, sub uh, sub in seven recitations. That's how great he was, and he was uh, and thousands of students would follow him. And Sheikh Shibli uh, himself would uh, was also uh, one of his students. And uh, it, it mentioned that whenever he would decide to travel. He was from Andalus, from Spain, and he decided to migrate because of uh, the conflict that was taking place. So he decided to migrate to uh, Baghdad. So they said that whenever he would get, a, uh, whenever he would decide to travel, thousands of students would travel with him, and thousands of you know followers would travel with him. That was his you know uh, his honor Allah SWT had given him. So as he was traveling, one uh, one of his journeys, great great scholars are with him, great great you know students are with him. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 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 Imam Sh uh, Shibli Rahimullah, he's he's with him. So you could just imagine what is this uh, what, uh, this this entourage and this group of people and how they're traveling. So as they as they were traveling, time for salah came. They they were passing by uh, a valley or a village. Of uh, of Christians, as they're passing by them, this is it's time for salah. Let's make wudu and let's just settle down in this uh, in this area, and and then after that we'll continue with our journey. As as he settles down and uh, and they, they go close to the well, as they go close to the well to get water to make wudu, and there's people lined up in uh, around the well, and there's there's different different people are standing. And and there's there's women uh, there's women there's young girls they are standing who are uh, waiting to get the water from the well. So at this moment, they got uh, they got their water. They made wudu. 
Shaykh also made wudu, they pre performed their asa salah, and they're sitting down, and Shaykh is sitting down himself to Imam uh, Shibli Rahimah. He said that at this moment, I have noticed that Shaykh have changed. Something inside the Shaykh have changed. That he's not speaking after, after namaz, he's sitting in one spot, and he's not uh, saying anything, neither he's doing dhikr, neither he's indulging with anyone, and his head is down, and he's in... He said, as you know, students, they were respectful. They wouldn't bother the sheikh right away. So they said that we stayed quiet. We didn't question him. So he said, one day passed. No question. Same, so he would just get up for, for wudu, for his, for, for his need, would pray salah, and would sit down again like this. And he said, three days passed. So I decided to ask. This is not normal. That he's not saying anything. And, and he's not, uh, and his, his situation has totally have changed from inside. That's, that's what it is. There were great students, so they understood. Us, we want to understand what, uh, what, our, what our Hazrat is going through, what his inside is going through. We would right away, you know, disturb them in their peaceful time or anything like that. So anyhow, say after three days have passed, he said, Hazrat, what, is, what happened to you? Why are you not speaking with us? What is the matter? And he said, and he said, uh, he said, just leave me alone, and you go on your way. First, he wanted to ignore it. He said, no, you, this is not normal. We can't just leave you alone. All of a sudden, leave you in this in this valley, in this uh, in this town with nothing. That is impossible for us to do this. So let us know what is the, what is the situation. So he said, he said that you know, uh, three days ago, when we came to this well. As we uh, uh, for for uh, to perform wudu and to perform salah and so and so, there were there were few women that were there. There were few girls that were there. Amongst them, there was one girl. She was outstanding. Her beauty was outstanding. She was a beautiful individual, and I laid my eyes upon her. You know, I laid unlawful eyes upon her. Okay, this one sight you see, it's uh, understandable, but second sight that becomes haram for the person. To you know, to away uh, to protect their uh, eyesight. Imam Shafi said, "Okay, what else?" He said that uh, he said he said I laid my eyes upon her. He said, but uh, uh, the next thing is that uh, uh, my entire body is in love with her. My heart is in love with this individual. So Imam Shibli he says, "Sheikh, what are you saying? This is insane." You know, how can you say sir, such a thing like this? She's a Christian girl, you know, we don't even know who she was. And you're saying sh such uh, unlawful things. And he said, this is, this is the state that I'm going through. And I can't move from this place till I encounter this individual, this, this girl. See, Imam Shibli, they said, you know, rethink and re- you know, evaluate yourself, what you're saying, this is not normal for a person to do, uh, for, for such a great sheikh to do, where thousands of students are with you, and when the students heard this, and they just can't believe what the sheikh is saying, and he said that I'm, I'm, I'm extremely in love with this individual, and I will not move from this place, this, this village, till I encounter her somehow. And you have to leave me in this state, and this is a uh, this is a takdir of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and I have no control over it. I have no control over my desires that I'm going through at this moment. This is what the test that Allah subhanahu wa taala is testing him with. And and, and then the sh uh, the student, the is Imam Shibli himself, are they're crying, they're in they're in, uh, they're in sadness and worry that what happened to our Sheikh. Uh, you know, we, we were learned from them, they're in confusion, you know, uh, you could just imagine what the state that the students are going through, and if something, if, if someone sees something like this, and, and they're making dua, and the sheikh is also making dua, but he said that after a few days, he said, this is my, this is my destiny, this is my takdeer, and I can't, and I have to go by this, you have to leave me alone, go into your, go on your way, continue your journey. And he said the student did their farewell, Imam Shibli himself did a farewell and they left the Shaykh in that town. And they, as soon as they get to Baghdad, they inform this, the incident of, uh, of uh, Shaykh Abdullah Andalusi, what happened to him. 
the, his followers and his murid that were so diehard, uh, uh, you know, student, when they heard this incident, they couldn't believe they passed away. That's how much, you know, that's how much love they had for their sheikh. That's how much, uh, 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 this thing. And uh, so, uh, to cut the story sto uh, short, after a year, uh, year uh, a year passed, making dua for the sheikh, they come back to uh, come back to the same town, asking for the uh, asking the people, what happened to our sheikh? And uh, do, do you uh, uh, last time we came here last year, and there was an individual that we left behind, you know, great individual, uh, our we left him behind. Do we know where he is? And he said that go into the into the forest. He's herding the uh, herding the pigs. The uh, uh, he's herding the pigs. So he says, Imam Shibli, he says that when I heard this, my heart came to my throat. That this is impossible. And so they get, they come to, uh, they come, uh, they come, uh, they come to the forest and they see that the sheikh is actually herding the goats and he's and he's and he uh, herding the pigs, and he's and he's dressed like the Christians. And and he said, what have what have hap, hap, happened to you? He said, I, uh, I I I encountered that girl. Her father said that in, in order for you to marry her, you have to do two things. You have to, you have to uh, uh, change your religion, become Christian, and other thing, for, uh, for two years, you have to give services, become, become uh, uh, clean my pigs. And, he, and I accepted those two offers, and I continued. Uh, do, after two years, I'll, I'll be, uh, he would let me marry this individual. And, and, and then, when when the student heard this, he said that our hearts were sh shattered by hearing this. And he said, Imam Shibli says that I, I, I asked Shaykh that you know you were you 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 have memorized Quran in seven Qiraat and you knew thousands thousands of ahadith. Do you even remember one thing that you have changed your religion, you have changed your custom, everything? And do you remember anything? And he said, I, have, I, I remember two ayat and one hadith. And the ayat, he said, he said uh, وَمَنْ يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ, uh, uh, فما له من, uh, من يُكْرِمِ He said, "This ayat uh, uh, that I remember is that if one, if Allah wants to disgrace someone, who's there to honor him? If Allah decides to disgrace someone, who's there to honor him?" He said, next ayat I remember, وَمَنْ يَتَبَدِّلِ الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ He said, if anyone who changes uh, uh, kufr with iman, فَقَدْ دَلَّ سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ And they have, been, they have changed into worse path. And he said, what about a hadith? Do you remember a hadith? He said, yes, I remember a hadith. And he said, uh, And he said, uh, he said, whoever changed their deen, kill them. Whoever changed from deen Islam, kill them. He said, that's what I remember. And he said, he said, you, you have clear answer, you know the truth. And you're in this mess. You're cleaning pigs, running after this, this girl. Is, is there something, this, what, ha what have happened to you? And he said, and, and the Shaykh, uh, 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 Abdullah Andalusi, he started crying. And he started making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Allah, you have taken me to such heights that I can never imagine. You made me such a great individual, such a great scholar, such great honor you have given me, took me to such heights. And I did not expect from you to drop me to such low. 
to drop me to such low status. I have not expected from you, and anyone, no one would expect that someone goes to such heights and would fall into such uh, filth. And, and and he said that, and he said, and he said that I, I have no control over my my my. Um, I have no I have no control over my tawfiq or anything. You have to leave me alone, and you have to go. The student they uh, they left. Uh, Imam Shibli, whoever came, few groups of people. And as they leave, uh, when they leave, they started going back to Baghdad with cry, with, with sadness, with worries, and with such grief. And he said they travel for one day, second day, third day, and he said they can't find their way. He said after the third day, they took a rest, they keep traveling into the same path. And he said after the third day, they see there's a, the, uh, there's, there's a river, beautiful river. Out of that beautiful uh, uh, river, there's a man that is coming out from it as if he took shower from it. And he said, we get closer, and he sees there was Sheikh Abdullah and Lucy. And as, uh, uh, as he's coming out of the water, and he's reciting the, uh, the Shahada, and he's coming out, and he's purifying himself, his, uh, his body, plus he's purifying his tongue with the Shahada of, uh, of Islam. The student, they became, uh, he said, we became extremely joyful, and we approached him. And, 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 and then sat down with him and he said, what, and to cut down to the actual point, uh, to cut, down, uh, cut this short, short since we don't have time. And he said, what, what have happened to you? What, what this test was and what, what, what actually happened? He said, before we came, he said, when, I, when we were coming into the town and I saw the people, uh, people, the Christ, uh, the people of, uh, of Christian, uh, Christians, when I saw them worshipping these idols and these idols and I, and I just looked at them with, uh, with hatred, with, you know, what, these foolish, they're praying something to that is, that is not living, that is something death, uh, dead, they're praying, uh, praying to their cross. They worship this, uh, unlo uh, worship this uh, um, unliving thing. He said, I had this in my heart and I said, I'm way better than them. You know, I'm way better than them. He said, just a little bit of arrogance that, I have, uh, that came into my heart and Allah SWT has tested me with it. He said, a voice came and, he, and a voice came out, out of nowhere and said, that, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh Abu Abdullah, you think that Iman is, is because of your ability, is because of your tawfiq, because of your strength? He said, no, this Iman is formed only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, I saw Iman came out of my heart like a bird and flew away. And he said, now we're going to show you what is, uh, um, uh, uh, what is actually who has the control over this. And at this, uh, uh, has control over this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with, the, uh, with this entire incident. He said, my tawfiq was taken away from me. My ability was taken away from me. I knew what was the truth, but I was just going through the test that Allah has put me through. And, 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 and Allah has, because of your du'as and because of, your, uh, because, of, uh, because of the effort and only because of the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allowed me back to, uh, 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 to uh, come back to the uh, uh, deen of Islam. And, the, and, 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 and allow the Iman to come into my heart. So he said, this story has to come into, uh, should, should be engraved into our heart. Know that, do not be arrogant towards the little ibadah that you do. The Iman that we have should not be arrogant, toward, uh, should not be arrogant, should not look down at anyone, even though he was right, even though his, if you look at it with, uh, with Aqal, you say he's, he's speaking the truth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like the arrogance of such such great person personality who has such knowledge, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has tested him, and uh, and and, uh, and made uh, made an example to us. And Sheikh Zakaria said that this story should have be stabbed into our heart, and should remember this the rest of our life. That this is only the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. No one has the strength or the power to do good. No one has the uh, uh, strength or power to do evil. It's only with the, with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah allow us to, uh, to follow, follow the footstep of our, our akabir. And, uh, and learn from their, uh, from their efforts and from their, from, uh, from their example. Wa akhir damwana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.